It's no secret that WWE wants control over characters. No other company has been as stingy about characters as WWE. For the majority of their existence, they've cared more about making and using memorable characters rather than just signing people known for being talented. There are two kinds of characters that WWE deals with. Characters that they create themselves, and characters that they allow wrestlers use for name recognition. You got Hulk Hogan, Ric Flair, Randy Savage, Roddy Piper, basically people who've blazed their own trails in wrestling and at one point have ended up in WWE. Then you have people who had characters that WWE created. Seth Rollins, The Million Dollar Man, The Rock, The Undertaker, Mr. Perfect, you get the idea. So after the Hulk Hogan character was conceptualized, it was a character that every promotion wanted at the time. He was Hulk Hogan before WWE, Hulk Hogan during WWE, and Hulk Hogan after WWE. Simply because the name had a lot of value and influence and also because WWE couldn't control it. When a wrestler with a WWE owned character joins another promotion, usually due to them quitting or getting released or what have you, no other promotion can use their name, and their gimmick must be altered. Brutus the Barber Beefcake for example is the character that Ed Leslie was most known for, and it was his only name in WWE. When he joined Hulk Hogan in WCW, however, he assumed many other gimmicks. The Butcher, Brother Broody, The Booty Man, The Man With No Name, The Zodiac, The Disciple. It's pretty clear that WWE knew how to develop memorable characters for talent that no other promotion could. And WWE had to stamp on Brutus Beefcake so that WWE is the only company where you would see such character. This is a philosophy that still goes on to this day. So for instance, WWE changed Fergal Devitt's name from Prince Devitt to Finn Balor, simply to give them a name that they can own and use as they please. Thus, WWE gets all the royalties for each instance that name is used for events and merchandise. We've had indie stars get new names over the years. El Generico became Sami Zayn, Uha Nation became Apollo Crews, Rebecca Quinn became Becky Lynch, Mercedes KV became Sasha Banks, Nikki Storm became Nikki Cross, and so on. Before John Moxley joined AEW, he was a very successful character called Dean Ambrose in WWE. Because WWE owns the name, he cannot be Dean Ambrose in AEW. Chris Jericho however is a self-made name and was able to build value from his own name, which is why he's been Chris Jericho ever since he was a star in Japan in the 90s. So while Jericho has control over his name from WWE, Moxley does not. Despite what people think about today's stars, a lot of care goes into these company-made characters. It's like making a character just like for a TV show or movie. At best, these are great characters that add value to the product, at worst, they're just serviceable. WWE trusts them to play the characters they have been given, but it's nothing to write home about. For a long time now, it's only when WWE comes across a big name like Hogan, Flair, or even AJ Styles, that WWE has the opportunity to give them a new name, but they don't, simply because they would ruin their chance at making the most money possible with that name. Though Despicable H has been getting really niche as of late, getting several indie talents to keep their names. Cedric Alexander, Ricochet, Mia Yim, Candice LeRae, Walter, and more. This has been a strange decision as of late, because WWE simply could have given them all new names that they could make money off of, because not all of them have had a presence wrestling on national TV. So, I don't entirely know right now why this is. Maybe Triple H wants to respect the independent scene, maybe he feels that giving them new names and gimmicks won't make a difference, who knows? Which leads me to the subject of the video. Recently, AEW has debuted a new star at the very tail end of 2019, a female who hadn't been a wrestler for that long, but one that many people have high hopes for. That would be, Chris Statlinder. Not a lot is known about Statlinder, and as of this writing, the public doesn't even know her age or real identity. She doesn't share anything about her personal life on social media and she only ever shares pictures and videos of matches, 
basically. She's been wrestling for two years and started at Create a Pro Wrestling Academy. But if you haven't seen her wrestle before, she can really be superb when she wants to. She has so many amazing moves and it feels like she has the skills and abilities of your typical indie Rays WWE star like a Pete Dunne or a Cedric Alexander. This isn't me trying to say she's the best female wrestler ever, but most of her moves come off as clean, innovative, and full of energy. It's not often that we see this on a constant basis in women's wrestling, even in NXT. Her finisher is a pile driver called the Big Bang Theory, but don't worry, it's completely safe, and behind the scenes backstage, she comes off as a really likable, chill person. Hi, this is Chris Statlander. That's true. Yeah. You're not gonna trust me? This is Willow Nightingale. Okay. I just did. This is Willow Nightingale. There's no hesitation though. It's crazy to think that there are wrestlers who have been in NXT longer than she's had her career. Even Bianca Belair has spent a longer time training than Chris has. But that's not the craziest part, though. She also has her own gimmick, and while some people love it, others raise their eyebrows at it. Her gimmick is that she's a space alien. Yes. Not somebody pretending to be a space alien, not somebody with amnesia or some other disorder, she is portraying the character of a being from outer space. She's given herself the nickname, the galaxy's greatest alien. It's a gimmick you'll either really love or really loathe. If you watch indie matches of Chris, you'll happen to notice she's been doing this gimmick for a long time. Working with various promotions, you could tell a lot of thought and development went into this character. Her way of talking, her lingo, her entrance, her mannerisms, the ET finger touch, and incorporating her gimmick into her wrestling. Perundumini Vertutum Exalto, Ego, Princeps, the Stair. For homo sapiens like you, that means that I will be your leader. Even at indie events, she plays up to her character as the space alien, and when challenged to a dance-off, she dances how an alien would if never seen a dance before. Many wrestlers on the independent only prioritize on just being athletic and talented, but Chris even goes as far to determine what kind of character she wants to be. By no means that this character will be the next nature boy, Texas Rattlesnake, or Dead Man, but it's evident she's determined to be known as a complete package when it comes to being a wrestler. But of course, she's drawn a lot of attention in AEW's women's division and has given it the shot in the arm it needs. Her matches have continued to deliver as if she's been groomed to wrestle on TV for years. She brings a lot more energy and intensity than a lot of the men on the same shows that she's on. It seems like a talent like her would be on her way to some big things, and her short time with AEW has been proof of that. But before that, she's also appeared on SmackDown as a local jobber. In fact, she was reported to have been signed to NXT just a couple of months ago, but it was later revealed that the deal fell through. While some may speculate that AEW offered Chris more money or she simply preferred to work with AEW, I can only come up with one factor as to why. I'm not a fly on the wall, this is just my guess, so please don't kill me. Here's what I think happened, Statlinder and WWE were working on a deal. When Statlinder asked if she could use her alien gimmick, Triple H or whoever said, no, we would come up with a new gimmick for you. Yes, it's about being the galaxy's greatest alien. It's not that it's a gimmick that's too grotesque for audiences. It's a completely family-friendly gimmick, but rather it's just not proven at the time to be successful. And the rest is history. AEW offered her a deal that allowed her full control over her character, and it wasn't a hard decision to take, especially because she's moving on up in the industry and making more money regardless. As for WWE, they'll always have wrestlers so it certainly doesn't affect them at all. Some people might say that, it's just a gimmick. Who would decide to not take an offer from WWE over a gimmick? Well, it's understandable if many people see things that way. There are some wrestlers that just want to be big stars in wrestling no matter what, and have accepted any character that the top company has given them. We've even had wrestlers like El Generico give up their self-made and well-established indie personas just so that the person can be a big name in the top company. 
Statlander on the other hand is not one of those people, even though if not for AEW being an option, who knows what would have happened instead. Regardless, I can also understand if there's an instance from time to time in which somebody is very dependent on their character. She was very passionate about coming up with her own unique persona, much like a handful of legends in the past few decades. I mean, Ric Flair left WCW in 1991 primarily over the possibility of losing the Nature Boy gimmick, as he was their world champion. I'm aware that there are some fans that don't like this space alien character, and how it's cringeworthy to them and out of place for today's wrestling scene, but we've had these kinds of characters for ages. WWE is very selective with choosing strange characters for certain talents. Bray Wyatt, the Boogeyman, Paul Virgil the Pirate, Adam Rose, the Headbangers, the Red Rooster. Some last longer than others, but they learn that they need to have confidence that it will work. Yes, WWE once had a wrestler that blocked like a chicken. They were confident to at least incorporate Finn Balor's alter ego, as well as Broken Matt Hardy. Triple H and WWE probably weren't sure the alien idea would be successful on a national or global scale, though I can't help but say Chris has been doing an admirable job with it. It's obvious she's doing her best to make it believable. So I could understand if some wrestlers do not want to give something up they spend a lot of time on, aside from their training and exercise. Being assigned another gimmick and likely a new name after investing in your own, actually sounds deflating, and it really could make your career less enjoyable if you end up with a character that you're not all that into. Chris must really be counting on this self-made gimmick of hers to take her places, otherwise, she wouldn't mind if she gave it up to join the top wrestling promotion. She's looking to build her own brand and gain a lot of value with it, like an AJ Styles, so that way she can be the galaxy's greatest alien and be able to go anywhere with it. To Triple H's defense, nobody in WWE has the power to predict the future. As mentioned before, WWE has the resources to develop characters, and a lot of work goes into them. The only characters that WWE knows can work are either their own or characters outside of WWE with large marketing value that no other company has control over. Furthermore, there has yet to be a women's wrestler that WWE has signed that made a name for herself that's larger than what WWE could come up with like a female equivalent to an AJ Styles or Chris Jericho. The only name that comes close is Ronda Rousey. Kana has been a very successful women's Joshi wrestler, but her name was changed to Asuka. And I did mention Candice LeRae and other wrestlers, but none of them have not really made waves elsewhere aside from the independent promotions. Yes, there are characters that audiences just cannot get behind. Not every gimmick works, but the reason they do this is because it's all about the presentation. Every wrestler needs a gimmick, and not all of them can think of good ones for themselves. AEW has a format that is very similar to old school WCW Nitro. Every match, promo and interview done live takes place in the arena. Wrestlers do vignettes as taped promos, and rarely are there backstage or locker room promos. And on occasion, You'll see backstage interviews on social media where wrestlers have the chance to flesh out their characters. So far, Statlinder has had two of these, and they paint a good picture of what kind of character she is trying to portray to audiences that do not follow her on the independent scene. If you watch AEW, you'll see quite a few stars on the show that have these outlandish gimmicks, like Luchasaurus and Jungle Boy, but they don't really do much to resonate with viewers. As for Brandy Rhodes being paired with Awesome Kong, I really don't see the money in this angle. Mostly all of AEW's gimmicks are ones that are thought up by the talent themselves, and you'll often get hit and miss results. Many are just generic indie wrestlers who don't want a gimmick. If WWE were to sign a random AEW talent pecked from a hat, that character would simply be no more. Going back to WWE, they only sign stars and allow them to keep their name and gimmick if that name and gimmick were to be marketable. Big wrestling names and even just talent from other promotions got to keep their names and gimmicks because they simply have followings outside of WWE. 
Ever wonder how Chavo and Eddie Guerrero were known as relatives on WWE television, but not Cody and Dustin Rhodes? It's simply because that was widely acknowledged in WCW. Considering that Chris has only been wrestling for two years at local indie events and was never signed to a major promotion at that point, she still hadn't proven herself with her gimmick. There is no telling what will happen in a number of years from now, and many would consider the decision to turn down WWE a gamble. But on the bright side, AEW has really benefited Chris in just a short amount of time. Almost immediately, she debuted on television, she upgraded her gear, she's already gotten tons of exposure from TV audiences, she gets to wrestle people like Hikaru Shida, Awesome Kong and Britt Baker, and she gets to see how her character pans out on a nationwide scale. So that's a big test for her. Not to mention, she's very talented. So the early outlook on her is rather good. She is putting on entertaining, seamless matches, and her character comes off on TV really well, despite that not everyone might agree. It's quite obvious that AEW officials have been impressed with her in-ring skills and character development. Of course, there are hundreds of wrestlers who love wrestling, as well as their job, but it really shows when you stop to watch one of her matches. Many fans who are excited to watch Chris are definitely looking forward to how well she fares moving on up in the company. This video might age like fine milk, or we could see one hell of a wrestling story unfold before our very eyes. I didn't mean for this video to be like a mini documentary. But I thank you for watching regardless. Credits for video images and clips go to WWE, AEW, Outlaw Wrestling, Chaotic Wrestling, Blitzkrieg Pro Wrestling, and The Deli Show.